AFK Journey is about to be fully released, and this is my first impression of the game. All of the important elements of a RPG gotcha game are right here. The beautiful artwork, the smooth character designs, the satisfying combat, and you know a fantasy world is not perfect without that soothing music. This game has a lot to offer, so if you're interested, stick until the end of the video. The creators of AFK Journey have reached out to me to cover their game and give it a try. I have to say, I'm really glad that they came to me because this game is immaculate. To avoid confusion, let me just mention that this game is a sequel to AFK Arena, so it's a whole new, different game. Unlike AFK Arena, AFK Journey is a full-blown, ethereal RPG game with different animations. Another big difference is that you are able to travel all around the world with the side-scrolling movement gameplay and experience the world firsthand. With that out of the way, first, let's talk about the story. I was really hooked with the story of the game. It is full-voiced, and your role in this story is that you're a great mage called Merlin, but unfortunately, you lost your memories. On the day you woke up, there was a huge fire in your village, and you had to investigate the cause of it along with some reliable characters. Along the trail, you slowly hear about your story from other characters while you guys solve the problems at hand. The build-up pacing of the story is just right. As you go around your main quest, you get to open up portions of the map, and I have to say, the world of AFK Journey, called Asperia, is very big. The map that I just showed where I'm at is only the size of a single region called Hollistone. There are still three more in the current patch. The graphics of the game are also top-notch, especially for a cross-platform game for mobile and PC. Now let's go to the fun part. The combat in this game is satisfying. At the start of the combat, you need to strategically place your units based on the terrain and the locations of the enemy that you are facing. As one great dude once said, wars are won before they are fought, so the strategy phase is the most important part. The combat is pretty easy in this game, so it is surely a game for our casual gamers. It is also a good game to play as your side game, where you just want to have fun and chill. Race weakness are a part of this game, kind of like Pokemon. Every race has a weakness and strength against other races. In this clip, I'm using a full Lightborn race because they are strong against Maulers. So before fighting, you should quickly check the enemy weakness at this button right here. You could also see here that if three or more at the same race is placed in the board, those race would get a buff. In the battlefield, there are also moments where there would be some battles where a situation that has an active battlefield mechanism would be in place. This includes barrels, flamethrowers, ice spitters, and stone throwers. By clicking it, you could activate their effects, but keep in mind that this could also damage your own characters, so use them carefully. The quality of life in this game is also insane. To mention some of them, you are able to equip one whole equipment set for every character of the same class. The level up mechanics are also very convenient. Each time you level up your characters, you could share that level with a low level character if you want to use it. Once you've upgraded five characters to the same level, all of the other characters will automatically follow the level without needing to upgrade them. You think I'm done? There are also AFK rewards that you could get. By beating challenge stages, your AFK rewards also become better. This definitely takes out the problem of having low resources, and it also means that the chances of burnout sharply decrease because you could miss a day or two playing, and you won't be behind because of how helpful the quality of life in this game is. Since you've already seen the basics of combat, let's look at some fun game modes that I've tried that you might be interested in. This one is called Tactical Drill. Instead of using one of your characters, you have to make do with the ones that are provided in the game mode. In this game mode, you can't just use brute force and hope to win. You need to think of a way to fully utilize the kit of your characters to pass the strategy test. This one is a boss fight that changes frequently. I wasn't able to beat this one because it's one of the hardest pieces of content in the game. 
The one reason that I couldn't beat him was because of this skill, where he would turn one of my characters into a snowman, and all of my characters were taunted to free the debuffed character. Even though I could not beat it, it still rewards me for how much of a percentage I took off its health. They also have multiplayer games like this one called Honor Duel. This is probably my favorite experience out of everything. This is an extremely balanced PvP system that the developers have developed. I'm actually amazed at how they could make a balanced PvP in a gacha game. In this game mode, your goal is to win nine matches, but you can only lose three times. To finish the game mode, you either need to win nine times or lose three times. What makes this balance is that you can only get your characters through the random card shop that will show up after every battle. For every fight, you are given a token that you can use to buy characters and items through the card shop. I hate to brag, but on my first try, I was 9-0 to zero and was given the rank 53 overall. I even tried it again but lost 8-3, to three, which again boosted my rank. There are also other multiplayer game modes like Corrupt Creature, where you need to have two to three players on your team to play. There are still more game modes that I wasn't able to try, and I've seen more fun game modes, so I will slowly grind and play them all. Besides the gameplay, the one thing that really sticks with me when I'm playing this game are the character designs. The designs are immaculate. They look very smooth and are very pleasing to the eye. My favorite in the faction of Lightbearers is definitely Muriel. I mean, I don't have to explain why, right? For the Graveborn, Igor's coolness overpowers everyone. For Maulers, it's hard to choose, but I'm going with Smooky and Mirky because of the dance they do when they're ulting. For Wilders, Brian is my pick because, for the same reason as Igor, he looks the coolest. There are a lot of different characters, and I hope that I will be able to try them all in the future. Since you've already met some of the characters, let's get into the gotcha system. In the current patch, there are four gotcha banners. The first one is called the All Hero Recruitment Banner. As the name suggests, all of the characters are here. This is the standard banner of the game. In this banner, you are able to choose two epic heroes from every available faction. For the rates, you have a 2.05% chance of getting an epic hero and a 22.5% chance of getting an elite hero from your wish list, with the guaranteed pity being at 60 pulls. Our second banner is called the Epic Hero Banner. In this banner, you get to choose five epic or elite upgraded heroes to add to your wish list. The rates of the banners are much higher than those of the All Hero Recruitment Banner, which is at 5.22%, with the Elite Heroes having an 18.75% chance and the Guaranteed Pity being at 30 pulls. Our third banner is the Rate Up Banner. In this banner, the Rate Up character, in this case Vala, is always guaranteed whenever you get an Epic Class Hero. For the rates, you have a 3% chance to get Vala guaranteed. If you're very unlucky, the pity is at 40 to get her guaranteed. And for our last banner, the Stargaze banner, I haven't unlocked this, but I did a little bit of research, and it turns out you could get new races from the banner, which are called Celestial and Hypogean, which are different from what we normally see. I won't be mentioning the rates, as they may be out of date. Looking at the overall rates of our banner, the chances of getting the rarest characters are, I think, at the perfect percentage chance to put the rare characters in. It is not too easy to get, and it is also not near impossible to get. Overall, this game is amazing, and if you want to try the early access, AFK Journey is free to download on iOS, Google Store for mobile, and on AFK Journey official website for PC. Personally, I like the PC version, as I feel more immersed playing on a big screen. I also have three options on what size to play it on, such as portrait mode, landscape mode, or full screen. This game will have its full release on March 27th, along with some cool rewards. During the official release, 
AFK Journey will give away more than 40 heroes of all qualities, including epic heroes for free, allowing players to experience the full range of combat strategies at no cost. So what are you waiting for? Download the game using the link in the description, and don't forget to use the redemption code for some free rewards.